Okay, in this video, we're gonna be doing Calc BC problem set number 16. The problems and a playlist are in the description below. Let's take a look. Number one, evaluate the integral of sine of 2x over two cosine of 2x minus one times the quantity cosine of 2x plus one. This looks scary, but I think it's actually a pretty straightforward substitution problem. Um, so I'm gonna say that I think you should be cosine of 2x because the derivative of that is related to sine of 2x and it'll like make the whole thing look a little simpler. So then uh, du would be uh, negative two sine of two x dx. So I'm gonna say negative one half du is sine of two x dx. And now let's make the substitutions. So I'm gonna pull out the negative one half integral of du over one, uh, no, du, no, one, ah oh man, struggles. One over two u minus one times u plus one du. There we go. Uh, now I have to do partial fractions. So I'm just gonna break it up. A over two minus, no, A over two u minus one plus B over u plus one equals one over two u minus one u plus one. Okay, if we let u equal positive one half, we'll be figuring out what A is. So you cover up uh, the two u minus one, you plug in one half, you get one over three halves, which is two thirds. When you let u equal negative one, we're gonna be finding B. So uh, you cover up the u plus one, you plug in, you get one over negative three, so negative one third. All right, let's rewrite our integral. So there's this negative one half on the outside, and then we have uh, two thirds over two u minus one, and then minus one third over u plus one du. I'm gonna integrate both of them separately, so I'm gonna have the negative one half that's hanging out, I'm gonna factor out a two thirds. Now, by the chain rule, there should be a two in the numerator, so I'm gonna put a one half on the outside and say natural log, absolute value, two u minus one. And then uh, there's a minus one half, there's a minus one third, and then this is just a straight natural log. So natural log, absolute value of u plus one, and then plus c. Now we can simplify this like quite a bit. Uh, we end up negative one sixth, natural log, absolute value, two u minus one, and then plus one six natural log absolute value of u plus one plus c. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take positive one six out and that gives me essentially natural log of u plus one minus natural log of two u minus one. So subtraction between becomes division within. So take the one six out, natural log, the u plus one is in the numerator because it has the positive coefficient, the two u minus one is in the denominator because it has the negative coefficient. So subtraction becomes division. Uh, and then we just have to sub back in. So I'm gonna say it's one six natural log absolute value. Go back, u is cosine of two x. So cosine of two x plus one over two cosine of two x minus one. And there you go, because it's natural log, you could have negative one six and then flip the fraction, take the reciprocal of the fraction. Uh, that's a property of logs. Uh, it's up to you, I think this is a good answer. Let's take a look at the next part. We want to evaluate the sum from one to infinity. You always got to watch that lower bound there, like the index. Uh, so this is starting at one. It's not starting at zero. A lot of them start at zero. A lot of them start at one. Uh, negative two to the n plus five to the n minus one over six to the n plus one. So a lot going on. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to break this up. I think this is a lot of geometric stuff going on. So I'm going to break it up. If I get two geometric series that have sums, then the sum of this overall is the sum of the series. If either of them diverges, then I'm not allowed to break it up and I might have to try to find some other way of doing it or maybe it just diverges. Um, so for the first one here, I'm gonna rewrite this a little bit as uh, one six because you have six to the n plus one. So I basically I just want things to the n, not to the n plus one. So one sixth and then negative two over six all to the n, which means that r is negative two six. The absolute value of that is less than one. This converges, so we're gonna get uh, the first term, so that's when you plug one in, that's uh, one six times negative two six or negative two over 36 or negative one over 18, depending on how you wanna write it, over one minus r, which is negative two six, negative one third. I don't know why I didn't simplify that, but I didn't. Um, okay, so that's that. For the second part, uh, let's rewrite this. So we have five to the negative first and we have one six, which is just one over 30 and then five over six to the n. So uh, r is five over six. The absolute value of that is less than one. This converges. 
So we'll get the first term, which is what happens when you plug in one, right? So you get 1 30th times five over six. So five over 30 is one over six. So you just have one over six times one over six, that's one over 36. Over one minus r, which is five six. And then uh, we're just doing a lot of arithmetic here. So negative one over 18, and then write four thirds, one over 36, and then one sixth, and then we can simplify this negative one over 24 plus one over six, and then that's three over 24, which is ultimately one over eight. So this whole thing has a sum of one eighth. It's a scary looking thing, but it's just geometric. All right, let's take a look at the next part. Determine if the series converges or diverges. So we have n factorial squared over two n factorial. This is like, I'm never good at guessing if these converge or diverge, like n factorial uh, definitely would lose to 2n factorial, but we're squaring n factorial. I'm gonna use a ratio test. Anytime you're in doubt, and there are factorials, start using the ratio test. So n plus first term, so it's gonna be the quantity n plus one factorial, but it's that whole quantity squared. So you have to be really careful when you write that. Um, so we're squaring n plus one factorial, and then 2n, two times the quantity n plus one is 2n plus two factorial. So again, there's a lot of places you can make mistakes. Just be careful. It'll be fine. This problem's actually not as bad as it looks. I mean, I think it looks pretty bad. Uh, all right. So we got to deal with this. N plus one factorial is N plus one factorial times N plus one factorial. And take an N plus one out of both of those, get N plus one N factorial, N plus one N factorial. So when I start to simplify this, I'm going to have N plus one squared and then n factorial squared, because I took an n plus one out of each of the n plus one factorials, and I'm squaring. So that's where that's coming from. Uh, I still have this 2n factorial. In the denominator, I'm gonna have uh, 2n plus two, 2n plus one, and then 2n factorial. We're just peeling off from our factorials. And then there's still a uh, n factorial squared. So it's weird, n factorial squared, it looks a little weird. Uh, what can we do? So uh, our n factorial squareds are gone. Our 2n factorials are gone, uh, which leaves us with n plus 1 squared over 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1. If we take the, so that's essentially 4n squared plus a lot of extra garbage. Um, if we take the limit, we just have a coefficient of 1 on the top and 4 on the bottom, and they're both squared, so just 1 fourth. 1 fourth is less than 1. This thing converges. There you go. Ratio test. Let's take a look at one more. We want to determine if this series converges or diverges. And again, it's like, pff, I don't know. There's a factorial in the numerator, which immediately in my mind is like diverges, but uh, I don't know. Uh, so I'm gonna do the ratio test. Limit. Also, I'm gonna switch uh, color, the green color halfway through this accidentally. Uh, two n plus one quantity n plus one factorial over quantity two n plus two to the 2n plus 2. And then we have to multiply by the reciprocal of the original. So 2n uh, to the 2n and then 2 to the n times n factorial. I'm having a lot of trouble reading today for some reason. Uh, okay, what can we do? Let's start rewriting. I mean, we don't need the absolute value because everything is positive. Uh, we got a 2 to the n plus 1 and a 2 to the n. We can get rid of the 2 to the n. We'll just have 2 left over n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n factorial. Ultimately, the n factorial will cancel. Uh, quantity 2n to the 2n, I don't think there's anything you can really do with. Um, all over, uh, we'll make this 2n plus 2 squared and then 2n plus 2 to the 2n. So we have two things being raised to the 2n, so we can like mix those together. And then there's still an n factorial. Uh, okay, so... The n factorials cancel. I mean, that's like kind of it. I'm going to break this into two different limits, and I'm only allowed to do that provided both limits exist. A limit being zero does exist. Um, so I'm going to break this into, we got our 2 times the quantity n plus 1 over 2n plus 2 squared. And then we have this other limit as n approaches infinity of whatever is left here. So we have 2n to the 2n, and we have 2n plus 2 to the 2n, so I'm going to make it all just 2n over 2n plus 2 to the 2n. Okay, the first limit cleans up a little. I mean, you can tell that that limit is 0, but it cleans up to 1 over 2n plus 2. 
which is fine. The second one we can play around with and turn into the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 over n to the n to the negative second. Now, the reason that that works out, I've written down here, is we can take uh, just take the reciprocal and it changes it from to the 2n to the negative 2n because it's like to the 2n to the negative first or to the negative first to the 2n. Either way, it takes the reciprocal. Then you can divide everything by 2. And because you have it to the 2n, negative 2n, sorry, you can think of it as to the n to the negative 2 or to the negative n to the 2 or any combination of those. So I'm going to choose to make it to the n to the negative second. That's where that came from. That famously is actually e. So um, the limit there is e and then to the negative second. So we just have 0 times e to the negative second. And then 0 times e to the negative second is 0, which is definitely less than 1. This thing converges. And I am surprised by that because I thought this would diverge. Um, OK, so that's the problem set. I hope this was helpful and good luck.